who is this that is very close to me? My age mate. And they always now look at my age mate. If I have low self-esteem, I'll look at them with what they are doing. And I think that she's what I should do because I want to belong. I want to belong being a teen, uh, an adolescent. I want to belong. I don't want them to laugh at me. So these people, these children with low self-esteem will just, the peer pressure will be very much on them. But that child whose, whose um, uh, self-esteem has been built as they come up, they will be able to know that I can be assertive. By the way, what I listen and hear, people tell me about adolescents. The physical changes, the emotional changes, the psychological changes. The, I mean, I, I think I, I can handle them. Because my self-esteem is, is okay. Mm -hmm. Again, because I have no fear, I, I can consult. I can go to my teacher, I can go to my parent, I can go to my priests or pastor in church and tell them how I'm feeling and how I, sh I can work, I mean, I can deal with this. Hello, my viewer. This is Health Now Show. Your health friend with me, Jane Karaoke. I ask myself, what is your value tag? If you are to sell yourself today, if you are to market yourself, what value tag would you give yourself? How much would you put as your value? Psychologically speaking, not financially speaking. We've heard a lot about self-esteem, low self-esteem, and how it affects our lives. And it's about the value that you place on yourself. And today, we have a very in interesting and informative session talking about the value tag. The value tag on ourselves. Sometimes some people may block and say, ah, the self-esteem issue. But today I would want us to just come on the table and talk together and ask ourselves, how much, what is my worth, psychologically speaking? And to take us through this episode is a friend, a psychologist who is not new to most of us, but I'm sure there are some that are new to this show. And I take this opportunity once again to welcome you and to tell you, come on board and we walk together. And this is none other than Jennifer Wangare, who is a psychologist. She will introduce herself further and then we can move on to delve into this very important topic of value tag. Karibu sana. Hello, viewers. Here is Jennifer. I'm back again with a very interesting topic, as Jane has said, today we are going to talk about self-esteem. We are going to talk about that value tag that you give yourself because we need to know that we need to have a value so that we can be able to take care of ourselves and now uh, we can we can be able to appreciate what we do. We should not underestimate ourselves. So we need a good value. So that is what we are going to talk about today. I'm glad to be back here. Karibu sana. Jennifer. Yes. As I always call you mm -hmm. because this is this is something very interesting and I love. Mm -hmm. Where does self-esteem issues start from? Wow. Jane's self-esteem issues start from the womb. Because what language do I hear people talk? This woman who is carrying me in the womb as a baby, what language does she bring out? What are those things she does for herself? And I will hear them and I internalize when I'm in the womb. So when I'm out, it will be very easy for me to have a, 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 a like a, a system that brings out, if, if, if she's a beautiful girl who takes care of herself, I will, she will, what she model is what I will do. If she, she she's just a careless person, who, who indulge in um, things that really are endangering her. I, I will, that is what I will find myself doing. Because it is about 
who, what is being modeled and what did I hear? Because, you know, children, when they are in the womb, they hear. You are talking about communicating with the children when they are still in the womb. Yes. So if, 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 if they, they are used to someone having fun and they are always saying, I am doing this for self-care. Mm -hmm. When they are out there, they, in their mind now it's registered that at one time someone needs to do something for self-care. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. If they hear that someone tells themselves that I think I am beautiful, I'm contented with who I am. The outright, that is what they, 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 they grow knowing. If they hear someone else telling their mother, because they can hear, the brain can register that, what will happen is that they listen to that voice and they, if, if, if now the, some, the feedback that the mother is getting is positive, but they, they, they take it. So even when they are one year, two years, you find baby girls, they, they really talk a very nice um, language. I know of one girl I was looking, I was watching a, a, a video and she was saying, come here, my baby girl. She was telling the mother, where did she hear this from? Maybe she had it when she was in the womb. So it's a conversation they have been having the mother and the people around her and the environment that make her have that. And I remember at one point she was saying, I, I don't have, as she grew older at five years, yeah. I don't have a good wardrobe. So I had to go to the shop and get something to wear for this show. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? This is someone who loves themselves. Mm -hmm. But you can see now as a child, it is because they had. Maybe when they were in the womb, as or even as they grew up, when they were very young, the world, the people around her, what they were saying, what they were doing, just for self-care. Mm -hmm. And how they valued themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe if a child hears someone say, I cannot take the alcohol because I know I am going to get um, maybe in the morning I'll have a hangover, I'll not be productive. They take, they take that and internalize. When they are older, it, it, it will come out so well from the unconscious and they are like, by the way, I shouldn't. Because, so they will give themselves value because of the environment and the people that they have been, they have grown in. Jennifer, I know I, when I was uh, pregnant, my two uh, children, I used to talk to them. Mm -hmm. And especially when the child the, the child is uh, is playing yes. in the womb, yes, I would I would hold my my, my stomach mm -hmm. and I would speak to them. Mm -hmm. Mostly, I was speaking scriptures, Bible verses, uh -huh. and I would call them by the name I knew I am calling them, and I tell them this and that and that. This is what I call you to become when you're born. And looking back, many years back. I'm seeing what I spoke is what I see. Not everything, but is what I see. And then that is why I'm agreeing with you totally when you say speaking. We speak to them. We speak to them. We Whatever is happening to us, I know. If it is something that is negative, it also affects the person that we are carrying. We can mm -hmm. go on. Yeah, yeah. You can you can now listen that I was talking about the building of, of the self-esteem in a very positive way. Mm -hmm. But remember, self-esteem is not only the high self-esteem, mm -hmm. you have even the low self-esteem. Yes. So the, what I've said now, if you do it in an opposite way, if the language you speak when the this child is in the womb, if the care you give to yourself is in a negative way, you are just careless. By the way, they come out with very low self-esteem. So it is important to know that that is where our, our, our self-esteem issues will start. Whether it is, if you are going to have high self-esteem or low self-esteem, it has a starting point at, in the womb. And how many people know that they, they need to start that early? How or, many people mm -hmm. know that? Yeah. Yes, if you remember the, the society we are coming from. Let's talk about the African society. And uh, most of the times our emotional um, information was was really hidden it was even a taboo because everybody communicated to us that you you should not cry because you are this gender i i always tell people that i have a child with six years i don't know where he got this from that a man the masculine me i must i mean it's just about struggles mm -hmm. uh -huh. so you, you can now see that because of the culture that we come from these things were never communicated to us so our self-esteem was never built. And it's not because our parents didn't want to build our self-esteem. Where were they coming from? What had they learned from 
maybe their parents, what had been modeled to them by the society. So they, they came from an unknown area. So when you come from an unknown area, you bring that to the next generation and the next generation we take that. So until we go to a place that today we can be able to talk about it, we, have, we can have a candid talk about, okay, let's talk about self-esteem. So it, it has been underground. It has not, nobody. Remember even when you were young, when the way statements were brought out, they were just to demean us. So anytime you talked and you maybe you could do your personality, you are very outgoing, you, 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 are, you are an extrovert, you could be told to shut up. Children should bele, not. Bele. Yes. Uh, children should not. If you had a talent, because you can imagine there are people who are gifted and talented. Mm -hmm. At our age, Jen, me and you, the yes. generation um, uh, X, yes. I think our parents never gave us that and you could hear you are making noise. If you are singing, to them it was you are making noise. So they put you down again. So your self-esteem goes down. And then t the next day when you think of, of bringing another song, they are like, you are not thinking about education, you are just thinking about the dances. And so you can you see? So the self-esteem was taken down. So you find that there was no platform to help us build. So it was out of ignorance that uh, it was never brought out. But now because there is knowledge, we can get books, we can go to the media, we have all the platforms that we can learn about it. We need to encourage the society. That is me and you who are psychologists. Let's encourage the society to, to read more about self-esteem. Also, we need to, to bring out talks like the one we have today, that we can talk about it when people see, when people hear what you're talking about, and they're like, by the way, this is affecting us. You can imagine someone will hear that I talk about it in the womb, and they're wondering, what is she talking about? So they don't know. So once the people come to learn about it, they'll be able to raise their own self-esteem and even help the other people around them to say it's their self-esteem. Yes. yes. I'm hearing you saying, you know, focusing on everyone. Yes. The potential, the young people that uh, probably they are preparing to have families. And uh, sometimes somebody just get themselves, they, they are pregnant. They did not know they are pregnant. You know, sometimes it happens like that, mm -hmm. even for people who are married. Mm -hmm. And then when now Jennifer is talking, we are saying, if you get in that situation, mm -hmm. if you get yourself into that situation, mm -hmm. you can now start building the service team of the being that you carry. Yes. And that start a journey mm -hmm. that you build the person that you are carrying mm -hmm. as you go mm -hmm. along. To mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we okay. can go on. Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, I, I want to start with with, with um the lowest age. Okay. Zero to two. Okay. And I'm going to take the both genders, mm -hmm. the male and female. Yes. And we see, because remember how a, a girl will build self-esteem yes. is very different from how a boy, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, the concept in the two genders is a bit different. Mm -hmm. So when you take a girl, dressing a girl nicely, telling her beautiful words, you're making her self-esteem go up. Talk about her hair. Put a very... Um, a very beautiful flower on flower on her hair, and she is um, good to go. Mm -hmm. And you will even hear them, them say, "I, I, at that age, I will wear the pink dress mm -hmm. because girls and colors, it, it's okay. Yes, girls and beauty. So you find that even at times, women when they are even zero to two years, they can be because you are modeling self care and self love to you as a as a parent. They will look at you and they will do exactly what you're doing. If you wear makeup, she will take your makeup and wear. And she will be telling you, Mommy, we can't leave this house before we have our makeup. Mm -hmm. And what out there, because girls can be more outspoken than boys, teach them that you can express love to the other people. Tell them that I love you. And they will be able to do that very well. So girls, I'll, I'll, in fact, it's even easier to, to teach them how to love themselves so that their self-esteem can go up more than boys. Mm -hmm. But I'm not saying that you cannot teach the boys, but now it's in a different way. Tell us how mm -hmm. do you do it? And this time I'm not only talking about the, 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 the female parent. Even the male parent now need to know that this is my baby girl. I can let her wear the good, nice colors and things that she's comfortable in and keep reminding her that she's beautiful. Keep reminding her that you can do it. That's the girl. And uh, look at those girls and uh, when you are bringing them up uh, and, and they really want to be with the daddy. 
Remember, they know that the daddy is uh, is a secure person. Mm -hmm. Even when daddy holds me in their arms, I'm very secure. Mm -hmm. I can't fall because these arms are mm -hmm. they are strong, mm -hmm. they are they are, are well built. Mm -hmm. And when they lie on their daddy's uh, chest, mm -hmm. these are wide chests, so they comfortably lie on it. Mm -hmm. So even uh, daddies can help the girl raise their self esteem mm -hmm. by being close to them and mm -hmm. telling them mm -hmm. the, the, those nice ni nice things they need to yes. even tell themselves yes. um for the boys remember now a boy at that age he really we, we have taught them that you are not mary you are joseph yes and they even know their name so at two years what you teach a child by the way it sticks and so when you start telling this boy that wearing a nice being sharp being smart being that you can be able to do a small task you can move this maybe a cube from here take it to sub to another place mm -hmm. giving them small tasks that they can and telling you can i have seen you can mm -hmm. so because you have done it mm -hmm. you are raising their self esteem and the masculinity in them and the ego the male ego in them so they will be like yes i'm a man mm -hmm. so from there you can imagine at two years yes teach them what to wear Yes, you can wear jeans, it is okay. Even at two years, three years. Yes, this is a way to dress as a man. So, and when you dress like this, you see how you look, smart you look? This is exactly how you need to. So they will feel it and they will, can, they can even see. So they will start speaking that language of the, of, of raising their self-esteem because I can make it. I have done this. So the next time you give them a bigger cube to lift, they are going to lift it. And it is going to give them the 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 the, the, the positive self esteem, and they will be like, ah, I think I can. So well, let's start as young as even two years, mm -hmm. and teach these children what they need to, to 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 learn. So you have to be a conscious, intentional parent. Conscious, intentional, intentional parent. parent. Yes. And remember, even as you parent them and make uh, raise their self esteem, please raise yours too. Mm -hmm. So you have to start with Jerusalem, which is you. Don't forget yourself. Yes. Don't forget yourself. So, because it will be like, um, what you have is what you give. Yeah. Again, remember, you are a model in this children's life. And remember, we have always said this, Jane. If you are a, a single parent and uh, you're you are bringing up a child, get someone who can come in and fill in the other gap. Because if you are you are female, you cannot feel the masculine gap in a child's life. So you can have your brother, you can have a cousin brother, you can have an uncle, you can have a grandpa to this child, and they will help you build the self-esteem of this child. So let's get to those children who are going to school who are five, four, five years, and we are now training them to go to school because we have already even toilet trained them. Because that is also something else that raises a child's self-esteem mm -hmm. that I can be able to toilet comfortably i can be able to go to the washroom and i come looking okay mm -hmm. because when they do that and they, they, they everybody is now saying by the way we can see that there's progress even them they feel and they, they gain the confidence at that time remember we're also training them even not to wet the bed mm -hmm. so you wake them up at night mm -hmm. and then you keep telling them and giving them reasons we are doing this so that at least your bed can always be dry and you see, when they wake up in the morning and find a dry bed, and they are like, mommy or dad, I think I've done something. So you're raising their self-esteem. And you know, unknowingly, that you can imagine when someone is wetting their bed when they're in teenage, it would, their self-esteem would be very low. So let's train them. And then again, when they you train them toileting at home, when they go to school, and the other children are, they are okay. We are all going to the washroom and coming back. If the, a child has not been toilet trained, they feel like, I think I'm different. So the self-esteem can go low. So let's start from even zero to two years. Mm -hmm. Then when they go to school, they go and find the teacher. And the teacher is a trained professional. So the teacher should now know, um, according to what I'm teaching in class, what is this that I can do? to even raise the self-esteem of these children. Because we want them to build as a, 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 a continuous, in all the stages in life, so that no, there will be no gap. Because once there is a gap in self-esteem, they go down and it becomes low. So the teacher now knows that I need to, to award, I need to, to make sure that anytime they do something, I need to appreciate them when they do something. However slight 
if there is any progress in everything that they are doing at school. So now here they have someone else who is raising their self-esteem. Not only the parent. At home, it was the caregiver. Now here, a teacher comes in. So with the harmony of the, the harmonizing the two, this child goes to class one or grade one when their their self esteem is at a place that they can be able to express themselves. They can be able to 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 say exactly they are assertive. They are very confident. And if you ask them whether they can they they they, they can do something harmful to their body even in grade one they can say no and they'll give results mm -hmm. because they value themselves mm -hmm. so you can see it is a journey that can only be done by people who are conscious mm -hmm. and intentional mm -hmm. so these children will interact with the other learners in school they will listen to what the other learners say about them mm -hmm. and you can hear in schools you hear one of the what, what maybe uh, even in grade one and grade two you hear them say who is the most, most beautiful girl in this class and you hear them even mention a name no, are they even called them princess yes or, uh, uh -huh. king uh -huh. and, and, mm -hmm. and those kind of mm -hmm. names eh? mm -hmm. because there is that validation yes. even from the from yes. the family yes yes so as they go to school the validation goes on from mm -hmm. even the peers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that is why we find that even at five six years mm -hmm. there are children who are i i, I have i'm gifted mm -hmm. because they know who they are exactly are but it is because it is started from somewhere so these children now will be able to bring out even that gift and the talent they have they will have the confidence to start and talk about it they will even be able to do it maybe something and those who are not only gifted in class they have other gifts like they, they are good in music very well they can be able to again if they find that there's someone maybe who want to to bring in something that can be harmful to them they'll be able to say no they are assertive but it is because we have to help them build the self esteem so the parents the teachers and the people in the environment we all have a part to play mm -hmm. how many times do you meet someone's daughter by the road and then you tell her wow you are really pretty not very many times but we imagine as a society we need to be encouraging these people and you see when you tell them that they are like uh -huh. mm -hmm. they can see by they need to go to the mirror and see what is this that this mom this mother mother mama mama jerry saw in me yes. so i will go and by the way they start a self talk and they'll be like yes when they do something and they, they, they it's something that they do it nicely when you appreciate them they are like, oh, I think I can do it even better. Mm -hmm. Jen, even us as adults, let me first come to the adults. When someone tells you that you did something good, in fact, you you, you do it more and more and more. Yes. Uh -huh. I wanted to hear that uh -huh. more often. Yes, more often. Yes. yes. So, in fact, you do it and you perfect it. Mm -hmm. So even children will do the same. That is why you, you see where in some shows, children are there. They have a lot of confidence. It is because they were encouraged. You know, someone helped them build their self-esteem and uh, w when we are part of this child growth it is very rare that when they are adult in the, the in the middle age or in old age that their self-esteem will go down mm -hmm. it's very rare because now it is progressive yes yes you know the, it becomes a part of their life yes so in every stage in life they will find that i think I, I, I need to, to see where do I fit in here? Mm -hmm. What am I good at? Mm -hmm. What is this that can make me a better person? Mm -hmm. So it, it, they'll be very keen about their self-growth. And, and I'm also seeing that they are not apologetic to who they are mm -hmm. and what talents they, they, yeah. they, they have yes, and yes. the task they're able mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. So I think that is really mm -hmm. boring or mm -hmm. picking back yes. from where they're coming from. Yes, yes. That very mm -hmm. early age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. We, we, when we look at children who are eight, nine years, remember they are, they are pre-teens, they are twins. They are not yet there, but they are looking, now even their, their, um, their, their relationships have now changed because the, when they were the, at home with the caregiving of the parents and maybe the nannies, now they have other relationships. Girls will be playing with girls and boys with boys. So what happens when they are building these small groupings in their, in their lives? Mm -hmm. they, they can be able to shine in that small group. They can be able to even to model to the other girls and, uh, and, and by the way, they, they help one another grow. Because they now know what they are, I mean, who they are, what they are good at, and comfortably they'll be able to look at the boys even when they are making the, 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 the I imagine like in the villages where they are making the balls using the, the papers, you know, 
the one who has a self, high self-esteem is like, you people, you stand here. Let me show you how it's done. Mm -hmm. When they are playing the football, yes, we, this is how we do it because of the self-esteem yeah. that we have helped them raise. Mm -hmm. So even as they interact with the other <coughs> learners, when they interact with the other groups in uh, when they are playing, mm -hmm. they, will, they will be able to <coughs> interact in a very healthy way because their self-esteem is okay. They are not feeling inferior. They are not feeling unsafe. They are not feeling like they are being judged. They are like, we can, uh, I can fit in. When they see that their friends are, are, are talented and they are not able to realize, they even tell them, you, you play... They, they, they're not, they're not, they don't bring out the jealousy in them. They, they are like, you, you know, you're very good in football. Can you teach me? All you can. Can you play? Yes, go ahead, do it again and again. By the way, you are very good at it because their self-esteem already at that age has been built. They can even help the other people build it. But remember, the person who is building it, I'll repeat again, should be conscious. Sorry, conscious and intentional. So children will come to, being teenagers. But, but at this age, now teenage has come to a, a place where we are starting even at 10. They're having changes, body changes at even 10, and they are maturing up. And now they're no longer in that stage where they, 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 were, they were looking at, we can only play as boys mm -hmm. and play or even as girls. Mm -hmm. But now here they are. They are looking and diverting their attention somewhere else. And uh, mostly now they are looking at who are near me. Who is this that is very close to me? My age mate. And they always now look at my age mate. If I have low self-esteem, I'll look at them with what they are doing. And I think that is what I should do because I want to belong. I want to belong being a teen, uh, an adolescent. I want to belong. I don't want them to laugh at me. So these people, these children with low self-esteem will just, the peer pressure will be very much on them. But that child whose, whose um, uh, self-esteem has been built as they come up, they will be able to know that I can be assertive. By the way, what I listen and hear, people tell me about adolescents, the physical changes, the emotional changes, the psychological changes. The, I mean, I, I think I, I can handle them because my self-esteem is, is okay. Mm -hmm. Again, because I have no fear, I, I can consult I can go to my teacher, I can go to my parent, I can go to my priest or pastor in church and tell them how I'm feeling and how I, sh I can work, I mean, I can deal with this. So that child now had a potea. They will be, they will be, um, in contact with themselves very well, mm -hmm. have, 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 they'll be aware of self. And so the negotiating adolescence, yeah. It will be okay. It will be easy. Yes. Mm -hmm. And because they value themselves from childhood, yes. even when they fight the changes, mm -hmm. and as the society, we are telling them, mm -hmm. you have become so tall, mm -hmm. you're even taller than your mother. Mm -hmm. You are now so big, mm -hmm. you're even bigger than your father. Mm -hmm. So that is a statement that can pull someone down. Yes. But now those who, are, who have uh, progressed in self-esteem, yeah. they will be like, oh, oh, I know I'm aware. Mm -hmm. I'm in adolescence. Mm -hmm. And I, these are physical changes. Yes. They are going to happen. And they are normal? They are very no more. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. When boys are breaking the voice mm -hmm. and uh, people are like, we can't hear you. You are not very clear. <laughs> yes. And, and, and someone with low self-esteem at that age, you'll be like, I will not talk. I'll zip up. And I will wait until my voice is clear. But this one who has self-esteem that is raised, they will always say, I'm, a, I'm in teenage, I'm in adolescence. By the way, the, uh, the voice will break and then I'll constantly get a good voice. So they will not be, they will not get into a cocoon and hide themselves. Mm -hmm. So they will enjoy being in that uh, stage where they are developing from childhood into adulthood. They'll be very conscious about it. They will, uh, and they will also accept the changes and they will not be looking, uh, listening to, they have been saying, I've become tall. So let me. Fold by mm -hmm. uh, so that bed kiasi mm -hmm. so that at least I can know they'll be like yes I can walk with my head high because the self esteem is high and I'm smiling because you're reminding me something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know when I was growing up Jennifer mm -hmm. I would uh, I had I've always had a small friend mm -hmm. and my peers were early bloomers they had a, a chest that has you know that is full some of them have bigger ones, some have smaller ones. But for me, I I had a flat chest. So 
this teacher in school told me, Jane, you are like a man. You have a flat chest. I know that really affected me. For a while, I started now looking at my chest. Most of the time I'd look at my chest and say, I think it, I'm like a man. Because when I look at the boys, they have a, a flat chest. And then I sometimes I would go bedding like this. Okay, because I have that chest, let me just fungia like that. Mm-hmm. It will something will grow from there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But later on, I decided I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to really be taking my chest out like this so that if there's something growing, mm-hmm. it can be seen. Mm-hmm. So that I'll not be told like that again, like a like a, a man. Today I'm happy that I put my chest out and I decided I'm going to be walking straight and not caring about. I don't know where that came from because it was just it was not anybody else who told me now you need to to show people. But I think it was inside me I am telling myself I need to to show them even when it is it is starting to grow. And that is how I am today. Today I walk straight and I'm okay because I I decided in myself that I'm going to change myself anymore. My self esteem was good and is good mm-hmm. because even today mm-hmm. I walk straight. Mm-hmm. Whether you see whether it's a flat one or not a flat one, mm-hmm. I am okay with it. <laughs> well, you know, Jane, as you speak like that, I'm, I'm like, a, see how the environment and the people in it are affecting the building of of, of, of self esteem. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, when because teenagers are, and adolescents are very sensitive to what is being said, mm-hmm. the feedback they get. Yes. And remember, they are also struggling. As, as you're saying, you are struggling. Yes. So you can imagine you struggled with, I think now this chest, because someone has seen it, let me hide it. Mm-hmm. Because it is flat and mm-hmm. someone has commented, mm-hmm. let me hide it. Mm-hmm. And then you stayed for a time and you are like, I'm, I've hidden it for a long mm-hmm. time. And that one has not changed the statement. No. So that is why maybe you found yourself, now do exactly opposite. Yes. So so you did that. But you can see the confusion you were in. It is. Because of a statement that came from somewhere. Mm-hmm. Look at even how... Um, I'm, no, I'm not biased against teachers because I'm one. Mm-hmm. The statements that our teachers used to bring out, you are dumb, just like your sister or just like your mother. She was my she was my classmate and she, she never used to get anything in class. You're bringing down the esteem of that child as a teacher when you give such a feedback because there are so many things that are good in this person. But because we are, we are not able to help them, because even as nobody helped us, build the, the self-esteem. Yeah. That is where I said we need to have the platforms where people can learn what what does this self-esteem mm-hmm. animal mm-hmm. Talk, I mean what does it entail? Yeah. So it is important to know that the statements that are said, mostly like we've now for the adolescents and teenagers, they'll bring out a certain esteem. It can be low though it can be high. So let us learn to give these children a positive affirmation. Mm-hmm. Yes, tell them and tell them it is okay to be where they are. When, when when boys are wearing those shirts and now they are smaller because they have broadened their shoulders and you are telling them, see the way now you're becoming, you, you are just eating. That is why you're becoming bigger. But for them, surely they are not even eating. It is just the growth that is in your body and the changes. The hormones. The, 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 yes, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let us be people who just raise the same esteem off. And when you find that they're making mistakes, like when the girls are starting their menses and they don't, they are not even aware. So they just wake up and they find, and someone is telling you have petals on your, you know, so, mm. and, and yeah. So sometimes we even laugh at them. I'll give you an incident of a girl who came to my office and told me how she struggled with telling her mother that she had said she had started her menses. Mm. And when she told her mother, people threw a note. She wrote a note and took it, took it to the, her mother's wardrobe. And then she wrote even the name, you ask daughter, and then the name. <laughs> so, and then she told me, even today as an adult, I still remember how my mother laughed. And she laughed at me. So not any other time that I ever told her about my menses. Because for me, that laughter was very, it was, it was very ironical. It was so evil. So I didn't want to hear it again. So you can imagine that girl, Sebastian, went down. So she told me sometimes I used tissues. My mother was working, but I could not even go telling her. If I, I used the, the, the parts that she had bought me, I stayed with her because I could imagine she could laugh at me. And you can you see the self-esteem went down because of something that was very normal for a, a, a literal girl to go through. 
So let us just be very careful. What about these boys? And they come in the morning, you find them maybe getting their 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 their, their, their beddings out. And uh, maybe a mother is like, you, you wet the bed, you know, and they're saying it publicly. Mm -hmm. And they're at, at, the, at the, the, the highest voice. You know, everybody in the, the, the house is like, uh, hey, oh, at teenage, he's still wetting. Mm -hmm. And maybe he had, maybe he had wet dreams. Mm -hmm. And the child, mm -hmm. this boy is wondering how. So they will, they will keep these things to themselves. They will, they will, they will not open up. So they will not even take care of themselves because in the, the other time when you, they have the wet dreams, they will not even wash those, those beddings. So they, they'll be sleeping in a very unhealthy bed. So let us just normalize the cottage talk and let the children know that it is okay. And then help them raise their self-esteem and enjoy being the teenager, being the adolescent, because we want them to, when they go to the next stage in life of being a, a young adult, it, they, they'll be okay. They will go there with a self-esteem that is a bit high. Mm -hmm. So that is why I said it is progressive. Yes. But again, you find that there's a place we find gaps. Just as I was saying that we didn't have the information, today we have it. So those stages that you didn't have, that were left out, we might not be able to go back there. But the stage that your child or your son, your daughter is in, let's help them build their self-esteem. But And you'll be able to see that as they build the self-esteem in that stage, they will also be able to fill in the gaps on the past and the experiences. Because they will always go back there and tell you, by the way, and say, Mom, this is what you're telling me. Yes. And you know, when I was young, my shosho said that my, my, my legs look like calabashes. Mm, oh, oh. Can you see <laughs> the statement? I'm just bringing a statement that can be said by someone to bring the child down. And uh, you, you can now see that every time now we bring the, the, the self-esteem issues and we are we're helping them build, they, be, they, they will come uh, out in the next stage when they have no deficit. Yes, yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, I'm just looking at it and I'm um, saying, mm -hmm. if I'm building self-esteem mm -hmm. uh, in the lives of my daughters, yes. for example, mm -hmm. and my self-esteem is very low, mm -hmm. how will I build that? Mm -hmm. I'm just mm -hmm. kind of reflecting and asking myself, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. I myself mm -hmm. have a very low self-esteem, yes. How would I build somebody else's mm -hmm. self esteem? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even as a community, even as a family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you know, um, um, as parents, because I, I will get back there and I, I'll repeat this again. Mm -hmm. We came from an unknown area mm -hmm. on self esteem, on anything in psychology. Yes. So um, the, when, 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 we, when we are here where we are today and we have heard about self esteem, and you look at your seven and evaluate your seven, you're like, mine is very low. So you need to build it. How do you build it? That is what Jen has asked. Mm -hmm. Yes, one, we need first to acknowledge. But I think I, I, there's a gap here in my life. Mm -hmm. And what are the gaps? What are those things that I have gap, gaps in? Yes. What is this, these things that are making me not have, give myself the best value? Mm -hmm. It could be the way I look at myself. And I have the person that I would want to have to uh, have wanted to be mm -hmm. in life, the physical me. Mm -hmm. So maybe because of the language that was talked, I know so when you were young and people could talk about the, the, the hair and they would say, a hair is not as good as, it's like, like there, was a, there was a measuring um, scale on which hair was better than the other. Mm -hmm. And then you hear them say, <laughs> because uh, when she does not commit, mm -hmm. it goes down and calls itself, it sells, becomes like dengo, <laughs> you know, the green grams. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you hear, you can imagine that statement was said. Yes. So it made you now as an adult yeah. have so low self-esteem. Yeah. And in fact, you keep your hair very short. I'm because, remember, I'm mm -hmm. laughing because I remember one girl we were schooling with. Yes. She had, she had very little hair. Mm -hmm. And then people were calling her the hairless girl. Mm -hmm. Imagine they were saying that. Yes. So I'm not just imagining yes, yes. how her self-esteem mm -hmm. was, was, mm -hmm. was at that point mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. even to go forward. Yes, yes. I was <laughs> even coming to that. So you can imagine someone the talked day, about the green, gram, the green gram hair yeah. and then someone else who had who, who had very little hair or they had a very big um forehead so the hair starts at at maybe at the middle mm -hmm. another one like me who has a very very low hairline yeah. that and then you are like uh, they, they they kept telling me your hair is almost getting to your eyes your eyebrows and the hair have kind of difference so in kama <laughs> and someone one time when i was young they were like by the way you could be looking like let me not use a statement that was it was it was really demeaning so that is where you could be coming from 
So you have first acknowledged that and you're like, so there are things in my life I need to change. And I can only change this by having a self-talk with himself. Because I might not go back and to those people. I might not go back to those other stages. But from here, I can do it. Now, that person I have in my mind, if I, if I cannot make, make that person to be me, then accept who I am. It could be my body shape. It could be my body size. It could be my, the length of my hair. It could be the shape of my, my fingernails. Or even your, the shape of my feet. So I need to accept by first acknowledging I did not create myself. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. God created me. And remember what the Bible says? We are unique in our own way. Mm-hmm. And he created us with all those uniqueness. And because I cannot change this, Jane, you cannot change the, 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 the structure of your hair. No. You cannot change the structure of your forehead. You cannot change the shape of your fingers. So accepting that is the first thing that I need to do. And when I accept it and look at myself like the beautiful and wonderfully created creation, I'll be able to love myself. I'll be able to say that I cannot harm this body. In fact, I have no spare for it. So I will take care of it. So there are things you can do for your body. And there are things that you can change. And there are things you'll adjust to. I cannot change the size of my nose. Even my ears, the way they are. Even if they are the, the, the ones that they are the elephant ears, I'll, I'll remain with them. So <laughs> I can call them the satellite ears. <laughs> yes, the, yeah, yes, the satellite ears. <laughs> yes, so it is important to know I first accept what I cannot change in mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. But that statement that was said by someone, I can change it. Because it was not about me. It was about how they were feeling. Mm-hmm. Maybe they were so frustrated. So there was nothing positive in them. That is why they brought out this, the, the, the statement of your feet look like calabashes. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm repeating because it's a very weighty one and someone said that to someone I know. So you can imagine you, you, they can carry that. It's not a, a loving mother and I'm loving because of the way you're putting it, the calabashes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, you, you can now imagine that um, when I start changing that statement that they said through a safe talk, so through I, I, I am, I'm changing how I'm feeling about it. So I'll be looking at my feet and telling God, thank you that I have feet that I can walk. I can wear the, 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 the shape of a shoe that fits them that does not hurt my feet. So I will adjust and now know that I am better than the person who does not even have the feet. I should even be thankful and grateful. So acknowledging is the first thing. Having a self-talk and changing some statements, what I cannot change, accept it the way it is. Mm-hmm. So that is how I will build my self-esteem. So when I'm now, I'm I'm consciously and intentionally helping my my my, my as a parent, mm-hmm. helping my children to build theirs. Mm-hmm. I'll have first build mine. Yes, because I'll have something to give them. Mm-hmm. I even have the evidence now that it is doable. Mm-hmm. Yes, someone can change mm-hmm. their script in life. Mm-hmm. Yes. So and w- uh, another one. Let us not remain with the unspoken within us. That was said and I kept it. I never spoke about it. Can you speak about it? Speak about yes, when, like, when I talk about now the, the incidences of the dengo, the green gram hair and the one you're saying that their hair is. Mm. You know, speak, tell someone. Someone you, you, you know that they are not going to judge you. You can even, sometimes people even go to seek professionals, the counselors, yes. because I think this is not, it's not organized so well with me. I am not able to help my children. So because I want to give, to be a platform for them to grow. And again, remember that you're even modeling. How do you deal with that scare, scattered hair on your head? Maybe some people will, will have a very good week. Others will, 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 uh, will shave the hair of the head clean so they can see. And they are like, if she's okay with that, I think even me, with what I feel that is not good enough for me, I can say I'm okay. So the statement that you bring forth is going to help you and it will be, help you even be a better model for them, for your children. Mm-hmm. Yes. We are the teenager. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, maybe we can go to young adults. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, oh, we can go you? ahead. Uh-huh. No, 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 no. Let's okay. go ahead. Yeah. These are people who are already now out of high school. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, they have started maturing even in terms of their, 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 their brain. So they, their cognitive part is now becoming, they can reason better than the teenagers. Mm-hmm. And uh, now, already, the, the, the changes, the body changes mostly now are the 
wamemalizia yes so they are like now i'm an adult <laughs> even physically i'm an adult mm-hmm. emotionally now i'm stable mm-hmm. i know what what works for me what does it work for me how when i feel this way and you know they they exactly know who at least who they are now they are not they, they are not under the parent um uh, uh, the cover of the parent so much because most of them are either in college others are working so these people uh they have some it's they, they, at least they have some power they have some freedom remember the teenager because we know that teenage is a difficult area we as parents our eyes and our energies and everything is on the teenager and unfortunately for us we always speak the negatives about the teenager so, but if we are able to pick the positive and help them build their esteem when they go to young adulthood and we have given them freedom because they are going to college then they are working they be able to 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 to, to, to fix themselves in that life very well they'll be able to balance because their self esteem is high this is where now they are making concrete relationships maybe in terms of friendships in terms of uh social interactions and even intimacy so they they they, they need to, to be helped by the parents very much uh, by support the, the parents still come in. parenting ads when you die true Yes. I remember so, we did one parenting our elderly parents. Yes, yes. Yes, uh-huh. with you. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. so as you say. Yes. Mm-hmm. So we are still parenting them. Not that because we can see them as adults that we don't they don't need our parent guidance they do. So at that time remember for 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 them because of the social interactions we need to keep reminding them as parents. I mean yes because we are their parents that people might bring statements because they were that to want to bring you down people because you are in college or people might bring in statements because they want intimacy with you and they want to be in control and if your self esteem is low they are going to win so what do you need to do you need to want to accept the state that you are in accept the the, the tasks the tasks that you're supposed to do and be very keen and when you know when your self esteem is high you be able to interact with the people who have high self esteem mm-hmm. and you be able to make the correct choices in life mm-hmm. because if a, for example if a, a, a young man wants a girl for a relationship mm-hmm. and their self esteem is high you be able to make a choice yes. and a good choice mm-hmm. he will not go for a girl that he can control you mm-hmm. will go for a girl whose self esteem is also high yes. they can be able to complement each other yes yes when they can't work they will not take a pay just because it has been put on them and like, you know most of the employees are employ- employers are, are put it at the lowest yes so someone is a lowest